So hi, Mark. It's wonderful to be with you today. Welcome to Oxford Conversations on Ownership. Uh, I am Dr. Mary Johnstone Louie, Program Director of the Ownership Project here at Oxford Side Business School and here with Mark Fielman. I'm really pleased to kick off with you today. You are CEO of Fielman. You're based in Germany. And as we start the conversation, what are the headlines that you would like our listeners to know about Fielman as a company? Well, Fiemann is a, a family business. We are stock listed based in Germany. As you said, um, we are, um, our main products are um, eyewear and uh, hearing aids. And we um, serve 27 million customers across 15 uh, countries uh, in Europe, mainly Central Europe and a little bit beyond that. And um, we have a very customer centric uh, philosophy. That means um, we've, we do everything um, uh, with a clear, clear focus on our customers. And um, that has led us to market leadership across most uh, Central European countries. And we are now expanding, uh, especially in Western and in uh, Southern Europe. Um, we have around uh, 20, uh, 22,000 uh, uh, collab um, contributors, employees, and um, we have around sales of uh, 1.6 billion. That's roughly maybe some benchmark. Well, and you sell every second pair of German spectacles, I learned. Correct. We operate only 5% of the stores, but we sell every second pair of glasses in Germany, um, which shows that we have a very clear focus on, uh, on productivity and we, we aim to cater to um, every customer and not we don't focus on a specific customer group. Got it. And so you're the CEO of Fieldman, but also tell me a little bit more about your role in light of the business, particularly as an owner, uh, how you sit within the business today. Yeah, I would say we are a very typical family business. Um, we're now in the second generation. So this means that my father founded the business 1972. Uh, we went to the stock market 1994. So obviously we have um, a board. In, in Germany, we have two boards, the supervisory board and the, the executive management board. Um, I am today uh, the CEO, so the, the uh, chairman of the executive board. And um, I'm also representing the, the family's interests um, who, who controls now around 71% uh, of, the, of the stock of, uh, of the group, but we also have um, a big group uh, of other shareholders. And then obviously the supervisory board is representing all shareholders and I represent uh, the interests of the family that are that is the majority owner. So it's a perfect segue to our next question, which is really around this theme of responsible ownership. So as you lay out the set of responsibilities and the perspective that you bring as an owning family, what does the term responsible ownership mean to you, Mark? I would say that um, it is one uh, of accountability and of a long-term outlook. So um, I think what puts our company apart is, um, as I said before, a very clear customer focus. I, I, would, I would think that a lot of business say these uh, things today, but um, as a business, we have really integrated customer orientation in every part of our business. And I always like to point out um, uh, the, the incentive system that we have as one of many, many examples. Because um, uh, in English, I think there's the nice saying to, to put your money where your mouth is. So um, I believe that a lot of businesses, they speak about customer satisfaction. We actually do uh, pay for it um, in our incentive systems from the store management uh, up to the board. Um, customer satisfaction uh, for us is a, um, a big part of the, of the compensation um, in, in many levels, actually. 50% uh, or more of the of the bonus of, of our managers depends on customer satisfaction. And at the same time, we understand that we can only operate our business thanks to our employees. Um, so I would say that we have a, a company culture, a philosophy that is very people centric. And um, we, we, we hope that uh, we not only say this, but we live up to this. We invest a lot of money in a continued professional development in the career opportunities of our employees. Um, we do a lot to, to help uh, also um, people from a disadvantaged background to make a good career in our company. We support uh, this a lot. And um, I think uh, that um, my, my father once said that, uh, and that is written down in our company principles, that a, a company can only work in an intact uh, social uh, environment. So by that, we mean as a company, we, we have the benefit of operating in a stable environment with the rule of law, with democracy, where everybody can, can freely move. But this is not something that is um, 
let's say normal, but it's something that we are very grateful for. And mm -hmm. uh, as a company, we we aim to make our own contribution to doing that. This means that we um, support, for example, the environment by planting a tree for every employee every year. We've planted over 1.6 million trees and bushes um, across Europe so far. Um, we are supporting youth teams. We are um, supporting uh, um, museums, especially smaller museums. And um, we are also operating a very, um, I hope, a stringent CSR management. And one thing that I, I remember very strongly is your approach to training. So if you could just say a few words about uh, the optometrists that you train in Germany and how you do that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for us, um, a core reason of our success is, uh, is our employees and uh, their motivation and their qualification um, that they have. Uh, we train, for example, with um, uh, around 5% of stores in Germany. We um, train more than 40% of all opticians in Germany. So those are usually people graduating from high school or from college. They're between 16 and 18. And um, uh, if we train uh, more than 40%, this means that uh, although we only have 5% of the stores, we nearly train every second optician in Germany. We invest over tw more than uh, 20 million every year. And I believe last year it was, um, uh, let's say, the, or let's take 2019 because it was unaffected by Corona. Um, I think we had something between six or seven training days per employee. So everybody had at least six or seven days of training per year per employee. Excellent. That is something that is very important to us because it's uh, it's important for our customers and the qualification, I believe, is, is something that drives service and that also allows our staff to continuously uh, develop themselves and to grow their own careers. Absolutely. And you mentioned at the start of your response on what responsible ownership means to you, you mentioned this idea of a long-term perspective. So for you in your role, in your chief executive role, and, and also for Fieldman uh, more broadly from an ownership perspective, what does long-term mean? Can you put numbers on that? Mm, I would say from a family perspective, uh, long-term means uh, a generation, because obviously as a family business, my father handed a very, very healthy business to me. And clearly it's my goal as well to be able to hand it uh, as a very healthy, functioning and intact business to, to the successive generation. Um, so that uh, is why long term for me as a family view, I would say that that's a generation from a company view. Um, it depends obviously on the target group, but um, as a family business, I believe you always have the benefit um, that you can take a very, very long term view. And most of our um, uh, investors that are not the family are also investors that have a very, very long term view. We don't have so many, um, let's say, uh, speculative uh, investors. Um, so I would say that in the company, long term means at least five, if not 10 years. We are just as happy to sell a pair of glasses for, for 10 euros as we are to sell the highest quality branded frame with uh, branded uh, lenses that cannot go up uh, to the many hundreds of euros. For us, the, the only point that matters is that the customer is happy and that he or she comes and repurchases usually after three to four years. And I think this way we're quite successful as a company because we have people, maybe when they're students or when they're starting their first job, they, they don't have a lot of um, uh, money they can spend on a pair of glasses, but because they receive the same service and the same good quality, they stay loyal to us. So this way today we have um, retention rates of well over 90%. And most of our customers come to Fieldman, not so much because um, of the advertising that we do, but because of personal recommendations. And I think if you look at that um, from a very profit oriented perspective, you might not be able to build such a business model um, because uh, the first or the second purchase of that customer might not be profitable for you. Interesting. So in your experience, do responsible owners have to be long-term owners? Why, why or why not? from your perspective? I think long-term and especially long-term accountability is important. So I think it's really great um, if you are uh, an owner that takes responsibility and that you know that you are accountable now and also in the future. Because obviously if the incentives are too short-term, so maybe only for one or two years, um, then you will not care so much what will happen, let's say two, three, four years um, ahead. If we mm. take the extreme example of a family business owner that wants to pass a healthy company to, uh, to the next generation, he or she, I believe, would, would take actions 
that are prudent so that the business can survive many years from now. On the other hand, maybe one, one argument against long-term outlook, not in general, but specifically, we've, we've seen this um, in the last, uh, let's say, uh, 12 months with the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, I believe that responsible ownership can also mean taking very short-term decisive action and um, taking a stand and taking uh, action in a situation where we need where you need to act very fast. So in the coronavirus pandemic, we didn't have so much time to think long term, but uh, keeping the company, keeping a family business healthy long term means that you need to act very decisively, very fast. So we had no idea um, in in March last year how the virus would affect uh, all of us, um, and because we didn't know that, and because everybody had concerns. We closed, for example, all of our shops until we procured the protective equipment. We, we, we bought uh, 10 million masks. We bought uh, san hand sanitizer, everything that you needed to operate the business safely. We conducted um, a scientific uh, uh, research into how to best uh, safeguard both our customers and our employees. And only then, three or four weeks later, we reopened the the stores and at the same time because we were able to get so many masks we donated three million masks we donated protective glasses and we made a contribution to the society because we believe that as i said before only in an intact society can we also thrive as a business the faster business politics science together can beat this pandemic the the faster can we go back to to a world that uh, is livable for all of us and of course as a business we also have a big interest in that so that interest, of course, is a little bit more short term, even though I hope that it's responsible. Absolutely. And what, where have you learned or been most inspired about responsible ownership? Who do you look up to in this area? Um, I'll try to answer your first question uh, first. And then the second one, I think in terms of inspiration, I think it, it's, it's part of the upbringing. So I would, uh, I would look at uh, my, my parents that obviously taught me very early on that with, with ownership comes uh, responsibility. And in our particular situation, because we are um, a household brand uh, across many Central European uh, households, um, when you carry the same name, that means that wherever you go, um, um, your, your, your actions will be connected to your name and therefore in our case also to, to the company. So that taught me very early on to um, be very mindful about the actions uh, that I take. So I think that was the beginning for myself. And um, I think nowadays, when when you when you follow business, when you uh, follow politics, I think that uh, I look up to anyone who who walks the talk. So who really uh, conducts his or her actions uh, on what uh, what she is uh, saying and not only saying A and uh, and doing B. And I think we have in the Family Advisory Council. Uh, in Oxford, we have some very great examples uh, of, of that uh, in the group that, that uh, you and your team you have uh, brought together. What is your number one piece of advice for family owners who maybe are listening to this and want to become more responsible owners? I'm in an age where, where I don't like to give a lot of advice <laughs> to anyone, but maybe I can share uh, my own experience. I think your research has yielded some of the most uh, interesting uh, insights that that uh, that I have gotten, and so I think uh, that's extensive uh, um, insights that can be gained from that. But personally, um, I think as a as a family business owner and as a member of a family that uh, that owns a, a business, I think it's very healthy if you explain if you can explain very well to to your children um, why your business is making a contribution. And um, I believe that my generation, and I would think that probably also successive generations are quite critical of issues such as uh, purpose, such as emissions, such as climate change and so on and so forth. So I think this will be a discussion that, uh, that will be held between let's say the, the principle of a family and the successive generations. And I would think that this discussion will lead in a, in a good direction of shaping uh, a purpose and uh, a meaning for, for a family business. So I think to have a discussion with the next generation is probably the best advice that I can give. Would you have any advice that you would give to someone who is completing their MBA and wants to turn their degree into positive impact? What would you say to them? I, I read um, 
a recording, a transcript of, of a speech that uh, Jeff Bezos recently held at the graduation uh, ceremony. And he said one um, uh, sentence that, uh, that shaped me quite a lot. He was sharing a childhood story and he was, uh, I believe, himself quoting uh, his grandfather. And he said, uh, cleverness is a gift, kindness is a choice. Um, so I believe no matter what, um, in what part uh, you, you, you follow your career, I think um, it's very important to understand that your choices in life define who you are. And when you look back on your life, when you're old, I believe that um, the right, that the fact that you have made the right choices will make you reflect on yourself. And uh, I believe that uh, when, you're, when you're doing an MBA in, in, uh, in Oxford, you're probably among the smartest people on the planet. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't have been admitted to that program. And if you are now about to um, graduate from that program, uh, you, you're probably even smarter because you got uh, uh, educated by some of the best uh, academic staff in the world. So if you, are, if you achieve that, I think it's about your time that you contemplate um, on questions such as, um, if you are under pressure, will you do the easy thing or will you do the right thing? If you are, if you are put on the spot in a big group, uh, what will you stand for? What, what, what do you want to leave in the world when you, when you leave? Uh, to think about this type of questions and to have those questions affect your choices that you're making now in a very important time of your life. Because now you, you set the basis for, for your career, you set the basis for the path that you will walk in life. And I think that's a very important time. And I believe that anyone who has a very intact moral compass and who has thought about these questions will have an easy time answering this. So I believe that this uh, advice is maybe superfluous for many of your MBA graduates because they know very well where they're going. Well, thanks so much, Mark. It's really a pleasure to spend time talking with you. Thanks so much. And I think we can take away your, your very wise remark that kindness is a choice.